All right, my friends, welcome back to Build Science 201. We're talking water management. This is our control layer for water, and this is our last module, prevention. Let's get going. Build Science 201 is sponsored by Anderson Windows and Doors, Huber Engineered Woods, and Prosico. Hey guys, I'm Matt Reisinger, and today we're diving into an essential topic for any construction project, sequencing and trades coordination. Do you know that most failures occur when the trades aren't aligned? And this is especially true at critical transition points, like where the roof meets the wall, or especially where the foundation connects to the wall. These areas require careful coordination to prevent issues down the line. Oftentimes, different trades are used, different products are used, and there's different chemistries. You know, think about like basement waterproofing up against a wall where there might be a whole different type of chemistry. You might have asphaltic based below grade and water based or something else above grade. I've seen a lot of times those incompatibilities can be a problem and can lead to significant long term failures. So that's why specifying an integrated system from a very limited number of suppliers is ideal. But regardless of the system you choose, working hard to align the trades before construction or application is critical. The devil truly is in the details. For instance, in the commercial construction world, maybe not quite as much as residential, although we're seeing it more and more for fire reasons, gypsum board is used on the outside often for fire ratings. And gypsum in particular is inherently dangerous. It doesn't allow a lot of moisture to pass through it, but the smallest crack or hole that isn't properly detailed means water gets in and big problems can occur if that's your sheathing. So those details really matter. It's also vital to understand the products you're using on your project. This means knowing how they should be stored, what their ideal temperature ranges are, and any necessary substrate prep. Environmental conditions also play a huge role in getting the best performance out of your materials. So remember, effective sequencing and trade coordination can make all the difference in your projects. And a big shout out to our friends at Prosco. They make some terrific products, in particular for the outside envelope, that really work well and are really, are, frankly, easy to coordinate with your trades. Guys, I appreciate Prosco for sponsoring and thanks for watching. All right, Steve, kick us off. Prevention, what are we talking about here? Prevention is, that's that line in the sand, right? We've talked about protection, getting rid of water, mm -hmm. not letting it get near the building. We've talked about mitigation. If it does get near the building, how do we deal with it? But at some point, we have to say no to Mother Nature. Yep, this is really waterproofing is what we're talking about today. It's waterproofing. And, and I would argue this is the most important uh, feature for a house. This is the most important thing for me as a builder. I think we said it earlier that 80% of construction defect litigation is water related. So we need that last line of defense. Let's jump in with this slide yeah. right here. So this particular slide, you know, it's really interesting because if you ask people about water, it's arguable that I would get homeowners, builders, architects, people in the industry that would want to show me a clad house mm -hmm. and say, well, that's how I keep the water out, right? I caulk every joint of my lap siding yep. and I caulk all the joints around my windows and that's where I keep the water out. I would say that is a big mistake. Yeah. I mean, we love a good uh, caulking, don't get me wrong, but caulking should be purely aesthetics. Right. And what's behind that needs to be our last line of defense. Right. And we talked about rain screens. Rain mm -hmm. screens are pretty much battling water in front of our last line of defense. That's right. So this is everything that happens behind the rain screen. I would argue, you know, this is a project of uh, mine. It was actually a passive house down in Rhode Island, Very second cool. one in the state. And from this photo, you should be able to hose this house down and it is protected with water at this stage. Yeah, that's right. That green face on that zip system sheathing, uh, once it's been taped, and by the way, they make all kinds of great accessories, that's our last line of defense. So once we get our windows installed, we take care of all our penetrations, our HVAC lines, our plumbing penetrations, hose bibs, all that kind of stuff. We need to make sure that all of that is waterproofed on the outside of the house correctly. Right, and you can see some of the things we talked about earlier as far as protection. Right, we have these nice big overhangs. Yep. Um, overhang over this window here, where yep. we actually bump that out. Um, the mitigation that's obviously going to come in the rain screen after this, but we do have a little kick out flashing there. It's hard to see, but that was integrated into the siding. So everything that we preached earlier 
has come to this phase, but this is where it stops. Yeah. Steve, I want to mention we're not getting into product too much on this one, and we're not getting into very specific application. Right. We're going to talk a little bit more generally and a little quickly here. As we get into Build Science 301, we'll actually get into selection. But I want to mention this is one of my projects, Steve. This is down here in Austin, Texas. And as we come into talking about the other control layers, one thing I want to mention here, this is an aluminum face product by Polyguard. And this is a product you only want to use in climate zones 3A and southernly, more south of that, because that aluminum facer acts like a vapor barrier. Right. And anything in the more northern climates, we need to make sure that we're using a vapor open water management layer. Yeah, and I mean, you bring up a really good point, certainly of the regionality or um, climate tuning our system. But, you know, we talked about it in the very first slide, and I'm just going to reiterate it here. This whole series, 201, is about kind of seeing the concept and understanding it. That's right. Picking out the materials, we're going to get into that in some of these series after this. But I can't talk to you intelligently about an integrated weather resistive barrier or you know, the aluminum flash, unless you have the basic concept and understand yeah. what we were, we're actually talking about. And, and I want to point out on that slide before you leave too, a couple things that you probably are about to point out. You know, we have some overhangs here. We've got a two foot overhang, there. but look how high that overhang is. I want to say this house had like 12 foot ceilings. So that overhang could be as much as almost 30 feet in the air, which means those windows in the first floor are very exposed. You're also gonna notice those are recessed windows, right. uh, which is an architectural look we were looking for, but this is a wood frame building. So we had to go to a really uh, nice, a very expensive, a very uh, craftsman detailed oriented uh, raincoat for the house to yeah. make sure it was waterproof. And that's why I, I selected this product, which is not as inexpensive as some other products, but does a really good job of waterproofing when we've but got But you still have things like protection there, yep. protection here, yep. you know, the overhangs. So the basics are certainly there. Absolutely. Next thing I think we want to talk about too, Steve, is when we think about uh, windows in particular, we need to know that windows are a product on our house that are prone to leakage, sometimes right away, sometimes as that product ages in place, uh, just like we get leaky as people as we, get, <laughs> as we get older, windows can get leaky as well. So one thing that we're really big on and we're gonna get into the weeds later on is sill pans. You know, when we set our windows in that Aluma Flash house, I wanna set that window into a waterproofed pan so that if that window does leak, that gravity is gonna pull it down to the bottom and we wanna make a pathway for that and make a totally waterproofed pathway. So what you're seeing there is a little hard to tell with this aluminum uh, product, but you've got aluminum wrapping into the opening and then there's a metal sill pan with a metal back dam that the window will actually get placed into. So a detail shot on the left, you can see the full rough opening on the right hand side. That waterproofing is brought all the way into the rough opening and then the sill pan is integrated into that in a shingle fashion as well. So when that window, or if that window were to ever have a leakage issue, it would not leak into the building, it would leak out harmlessly. Yeah, and if you haven't checked it out, go check out the episode on mitigation because we have some really good pictures of uh, a project that Matt fixed up, but where proper sill flashing wasn't done. Where a pan flash was not done, that's right. I wanted to make mention here too, Steve, though, that even in my climate, there's a bunch of different choices when it comes mm -hmm. to this. You know, we showed some Huber Zip, which is an integrated product. We showed some peel and stick. This is a vapor open peel and stick. Uh, so this is a Sips house I built a couple years ago. And so there's lots of different options for that waterproofing layer. But one thing I want to point out, Steve, is when we use a particular product, whether it's a peel and stick, whether it's a fluid applied and integrated, we want to use that same manufacturer's products in that install to make sure that the entire system we're using is going to work together and not have problems. Yeah. I mean, I get asked all the time, what's the right product we should be using? My answer is always the same. The one that's installed properly. That's right. Right. We can make this work. We can make the Aluma Flash work. We can make the integrated weather resistant barrier work. It's understanding the system, understanding what our goals are, and then marrying the two. That's right. Exactly. Here's a category that not a lot of people have seen, but this is a fluid applied weather barrier. So in other words, this waterproofing is actually uh, comes in a bucket 
and it's kind of rolled on the house, almost like a, uh, like a kind of rubberized bed liner. This happens to be Prosico, uh, and this is their Cat5 system. So this is a house up in Dallas, and if you scroll to the next image, you'll be able to see that when you roll this on, you can still see a little bit of the outline of the Ornan strand board sheathing uh, through the product, but it's been rolled on continuous, and now we've got a really good water barrier that's continuous on the whole outside of the house. And they've got a whole series of products to install your window with a sill pan yeah. and with flashing as well. I do like how their products are color coded so you kind of know what product is what on the building, but that's a whole nother category, that fluid applied weather barrier. So, you know, installing it right, our wall assemblies, I mean, I'm sure you would agree, they've become more complicated. For sure. Right, we don't have three or four materials, we have 10, 12, 14 materials. Yep in the wall. So the thing that I really like about this photo is that it shows off the sequencing, right? It's it's understanding we have multiple systems here. We have the uh, integrated weather resistive barrier there. We have our flashing coming up and then we have our roofing here and then this will get counter flashed. We'll get something there and then we'll bring that insulation over. So sequencing is very important, you know, and if I zoom in, you get a really good shot of that system, but understand that your flashing system needs to come back and it needs to connect to our primary water management system. In this case, it's the integrated weather resistive barrier yep. back there. So you showed it in aluminum flash. This is a wood frame structure. This is just a zip stretch tape pan flashing. And a couple of good things about this, notice there's a back dam here. Mm -hmm. And that back dam is to resist any water from getting back into the building here. Yep. Right? So we, we saw for that. Notice it's hard to see here, but there is positive slope here, right? If I drew that, it's probably, it's very, very shallow, but there is a slope to that sill. So we need motivation to get that water out of the system mm -hmm. here. And then, of course, notice we have the proper lapping. The sill goes up and this comes up over the top so that we're not scooping water. Yep. We're actually shedding water in a shingle fashion. And here's just a fully installed window. Notice again, the jam overlaps the sill, the head overlaps the jam. Notice there is no flashing on the bottom and that's so water can weep out. Now, some people are probably asking, what's with the black paper? If you remember from mitigation, we did that one house that had the open joint rain screen. Well, we have to put in our window before we can put on our rain screen. So we need to find out a sequence that we can integrate that. So by putting in this black paper, just consider it an extension of that pan flashing at the sill. We just drape that down. It gets stapled here because a couple weeks from now, someone's gonna come over here, they're gonna flip that up. They'll bring in the paper underneath and we'll be able to tie that system together. Yeah, sometimes you'll call that an apron on a window and it's a way to allow shingling to happen later on the job site. Right. And again, it's, you know, gets back to that old adage, what's the best material? Well, the one installed right. If you develop a system that needs a tape and the tape needs to be rolled, guess what we gotta do? We gotta roll the tape, right? You can't have a system that companies have literally spent hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars developing a system and just say, hey, I'm gonna use Steve's system. What do they know, right? We, <laughs> we just put that on, I can run my hand across the tape, we're all set. No, they asked for it to be roll the tape for a reason, and it actually says, yeah, there's a little logo roll, on the tape, roll the tape right on the tape. Yeah, that's right. So, you know, whatever system you're using, any choice, you need to understand what are the parameters and the installation instructions for that system. This is just a few other flashing. There's a lot of companies that have these flashing systems. Um, this one here, is that? What's the quick flash? Quick flash. Um, and the thing about quick flash is these flashing boots go from like half inch to something like 10 or 12 inches. They have all kinds at, of sizes. In a bunch of different increments. And, and it's basically know. a neoprene gasket, kind of like you'd see a roof jack or a roof penetration, but made for a sidewall. Because uh, right. we're really talking about sidewalls of houses right now and not roofing. 
but the, this gives you that same amount of waterproofing on your walls as your roof would have. Yeah, and you know, the builders out there, again, you know, you have to plan for this because mm -hmm. you can't just come in and say, oh, we'll cut that after the siding is up. And I've seen that before, right? You Major have to mistake. plan for all of these penetrations and, and such. And it's like, you know, as an architect, I'll tell a story, you know, Brian, mm -hmm. right? You know, Brian will come at me when we're pouring the footing, he'll start talking about where the penetrations are in the wall. And it's like, I got to stop for a minute. It's like, Brian, we don't even have the footings in. But that's where, you know, builders that are planning, that's where their mind is. Yep. They're, they're not here today. They're, you know, two, three weeks down the road. That's right. This is another great system. I'm, you're familiar with them, right? Polyguard. Yep. And it's really good that, you know, they developed a waterproofing system that you see here. We used it and went down over the footing. But they realize that there's potential issue with their system. So they develop systems where they have a special sealant that goes at that cold joint, mm -hmm. right? This is poured after the footing is poured. So you end up with a joint there that's susceptible to water. So they develop a sealant just for that. Probably if I zoom in, mm -hmm. you can see there is a little bit of blue there. So in there and around the corner. So, you know, having that dual system, it really, you know, credit to the manufacturer for understanding that, you know, that's the riskiest part of their system and to develop kind of a second tier of uh, risk solutions. That's right. And then our last slide here, right? The question is, how do you know, <laughs> right? I, I talk with builders, oh, we, we build the best house. We install the best. Our, our window installer is the best. How do you know? Have you ever tested it, right? Um, this is our good friend, Jake Bruton. This is out at his house. We went around and actually tested a few windows. So what you're seeing in the foreground there is a ladder that looks like he's got a spring clamp and a hose on there. And what, how long did Jake leave that hose? Yeah, we there? probably left it on there for about five minutes of hard water. And I mean, if we walk inside and that is dry on the inside there. After five or 10 minutes of hosing. Five or 10 minutes of, of hose, hosing that down, then uh, you know there shouldn't be an issue. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. That's a, uh, that's a great test for any builder, but especially difficult when you've got a recessed window like that. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's more details. There can be, if it was a more standard uh, house wrap system, there'd be more origami, as I like to say. So it's interesting to see that Jake has used, for instance, the Huber Zip system, and he's also used their fluid applied product. Yeah, we have uh, that. Liquid flashing. Their liquid flash. To here. make a waterproof window install. Yeah. You know, it's it's really interesting. You've heard me say this comment when you came to visit the Gloucester house. You know, one of my happiest moments at um, as being an architect was I got awarded a job to do this magnificent custom home on the water. And I was so excited. And then on the way home, it was probably one of my scariest moments of being an architect <laughs> because I realized I'd just been awarded this magnificent custom home on the water. Yeah. Right? In so a it's a challenging environment. In a challenging environment. So if you're building a house and you're a builder and you do a lot of coastal homes, okay, maybe on the side that doesn't face the water, we don't need to test it. But if you're putting in, you know, twenty thousand dollars, thirty thousand dollars worth of windows on the ocean side, you might want to break out the hose. Give that a hose down so you know you're delivering your client what they expect. To be honest, Steve, this is the litmus test for me. This module that we're talking about in water, and in particular, this last line of defense, this is the litmus test. You know, a good builder is gonna really think about these details, is gonna get all the things correct, it's gonna use a good system and install it per the manufacturer's recommendations. A builder that's careless, that doesn't think about it, they're, they're gonna have problems in the future. And I've been there, I've had those problems, I don't want them again. So guys, hopefully you learned something today. Build Science 201 continues in our next module. We're jumping into air next time. Yeah, exciting. I mean, I love water management, but who doesn't love a little bit of talk about air tightness? Time to talk about air. Guys, we'll see you next time on The Build Show. Sponsored by Anderson Windows and Doors, Huber Engineered Woods, and Prosico. This is Build Science 201.